Plato said that music is to the mind as air is to the body, and New Zealand is a nation whose breath is the sound of the history and culture of its past. A land teeming with tropical forests, lush rolling hills, jagged mountain peaks, unique native residents, and magical geological displays of its volcanic origins. These islands are the stage for a rich musical tapestry, the story of the people that live here. Traditions kept alive through adversity or far from their origins that live on in the communities throughout this land and continue to thrive here to this day. This is Sound Culture New Zealand. We are Ollie and Lavi, and we have spent the last six months exploring this country from top to bottom, seeking out music, culture, the communities that make up this nation's identity, and all of this by foot. The 3,000 kilometer Tiararoa Trail from Cape Brianga in the north all the way to Bluff in the south allowed us to see this country intimately, step by step, and meet amazing people along the way. People who were kind enough to share with us their music, their culture, their heritage, their unique story in this world. So join us on our musical adventure of exploration. Our journey begins in the tropical forested Northland, in the town Kotatofonga Arepe, Fongare, the gathering place of the whales. Here we meet the Harding family for a traditional Māori welcoming ceremony. It was composed for um, unity, to bring all like diversity in the world together and show everybody that we are the same people. The human race, we're all the same. We love each other and that's really what the song is. It tells, it depicts people as one. <laughs>
New Zealand's Māori culture and heritage is respected and celebrated and remains a living, breathing and evolving entity to this day. Nowhere is this more evident than in Rotorua, the cultural capital of the nation and hotspot of geothermal activity. Tourists are drawn here from around the world, coming to witness the traditions, beauty and mystical power of this culture. The spirit and sound of New Zealand's past that still echoes through the mountains, rivers and forests of these islands. But there is another sound here in Rotorua. A music that fills not only the streets here, but in towns and cities all over New Zealand. And it is a truly unexpected sound. I didn't actually know pipe bands were a thing until I was about 11. I had no idea what it was. The so Pagpipes sort of come to New Zealand from Scotland many years ago when the settlers first came. And Dunedin, New Zealand, the South Island, is known as Edinburgh of the South. So they all landed out in Dunedin and they obviously brought their culture with them and their bagpipes and it spread. So there are lots of Scottish settlers that came to New Zealand and they got on really well with the Māori tribes because they had a clans and tribes with a similar kind of system. So they got on really well and a lot of them stayed in New Zealand because they they could, they bonded with the locals and they were able to share their culture. And then it all just spread out all over New Zealand. So many years ago there used to be a pipe band in every little place, in every little tiny city, there'd be a little pipe band. So New Zealand is obviously a long way away from Scotland. I've still kept up with the technology, so we're still on par with Scotland, so they've got the top level bands and in New Zealand we've also got top level bands that go over and compete at Worlds. So it's not quite the same standard but we're, we're always on the heel of the people in Scotland so we like to stay up there. So a pipe band is, the main attraction is obviously the pipers. So think of it as, if you're wrapping a parcel, the main attraction is what's inside. So well, you can't give a present away without the wrapping. So the side drummers are the wrapping. We keep it all together, we keep it nicely packaged up, and then the tenor drummer and the bass drummer, so the tenor drummer is the one that spins the stick, and the bass drummer in the middle, are the nice bow on the top, so they complete the whole package. That's how I like to explain it. It's a little bit different, but, <laughs> but yeah.
Away from the sound of pipes and drums and the resounding pride of New Zealand's Scottish heritage, a slow-burning music sways that has captured the ears and hearts of so many Kiwi folk from generations young and old. It is a music that originates from a whole other part of the world, and here in the town of Pukekohe, we spent an afternoon with a legend who has dedicated his life to the wonderful sound that is country music. Kia ora, my name's Dennis Marsh, and I'm about to tell you about the country music as I see it, how I found it, how I started. Well, it's a pretty, pretty amazing sort of a situation we're in. I was asked to go along to a country music club. In actual fact, I was dragged along to a country music club. Country music and western. <laughs> I thought to myself, whoa, I don't want to go to that sort of a club. It sounds like old people, you know, with the old violins and stuff like that. And um, I went. And man, did I get a shock. I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't realise there were so many Maori entertainers in there. The whole band was Maori. I just couldn't believe that they would be into country music. And in fact, I didn't even know what country music was until I got to the got to the um, the club. That was way back in 1984, I guess. And I fell in love with country music. And I thought to myself, wow. Somehow or other, my name got put on the board. And I had to get up and sing as a new person there in the room, you see. Whoa, that was a big, big surprise. I had to get up and sing. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, sing? What am I going to sing here? And um, Chris Christopherson came to my mind. You know, and I thought, yes, I think I can do that. I think I can do that song. I wonder if the band can play it. <laughs> of course they could play it. At the end of the song, I got a rousing applause. And they asked for another one. Now, I didn't know another one, so I sang it again. <laughs> From then on, I, I found that country music was going to be part of me for the rest of my life. Right now, I think country music is at its, um, not quite reached its best yet, but I feel that there's a lot of young people who can get where they want to be, just by a little bit more hard work. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing to know that country music is, is still well here in New Zealand. Yeah, what I'm about to sing is a, it's a legion song, it's, um, it's a love song. Bo kare kare ana, and um, I hope you enjoy this one. Bo kare kare ana, no way a rotu rua, fiti atu koe hi. Further down the North Island, on the streets of Palmerston North, we met another performer who has also spent a lifetime spreading the joys of country music in his own wonderful, eccentric and infectious way. I found this job in 1970, 49 years ago, all around New Zealand, being on television every time, newspapers, radio stations, good thing. So I'm 71 now, family are trying to get me to retire, slow down. I love my work so much I can't stop. I tried to retire a couple of years ago, it didn't last long. I was soon bored. It's on by a very own gym singer, Tony Williams. Rose, can I share a bad Must be here, Pumps.
Our journey began in the tropical north and here on the North Island's southern tip, so it ends, in the nation's capital city, Wellington. Here we had the privilege to meet a community of people connected through their love of music, who, remembering the joys that their songs of their childhood brought, have reconnected with their past traditions, and thus, four years ago, the Wellington Regional Māori Choir was born, welcoming all members who share their love for the Te Reo Māori hymns and folk songs of yesteryear.
Hi guys, thanks so much for watching this video. We are so thankful for all the support we get and we would love it if you would subscribe to the channel by clicking here. Help us continue our journey recording and sharing the music and stories of the world.